Hey, Phil Ebener here with the Photography Masterclass and VideoSchoolOnline.com and today I'm bringing you behind the scenes of a little photo shoot that I'm doing standing in the middle of the nursery for our twin boys that are coming in August and I thought this was the perfect opportunity to kind of showcase how you can take photos in a small space with low light, great for real estate photography or if you're a blogger or any kind of DIY creator or photographer trying to take good photos without a lot of light in a small space. Hopefully these tips and the way that I show you how I'm doing it today will help you improve your own photography. So yes, like I mentioned, this is the nursery for our twin boys that are coming and my wife has done an amazing job setting up this nursery. It looks like just off of Pinterest. And so she wanted to take some photos to share with our friends and family and she got out her iPhone, took some photos, it was nighttime. When you're trying to take photos of an entire room like this, you're not going to get a great shot with the lens that an iPhone has. You really do need a wider lens. Also with the lighting, the photos that she shot were at night and with the blinds closed, with the overhead lights, I'll turn them on right now. You can tell a little bit that there's more light right now, but the lighting coming up, up from overhead just isn't that nice. And so I'm really going to be depending on all the light coming in from that one window that you can kind of see over there in the corner of the video frame. And we're going to be getting a lot better shots with this camera. Now the camera that I'm using is the Canon 70D, so it's a crop sensor camera. I'm going to be using a variety of lenses so I can both capture the wide sort of shots of the entire space, but also some detail shots. So this lens I'm using is the Tokina 11 to 16 built for Canon, so it's a nice sort of wide angle lens. The one that's on the Canon C100 that I'm shooting on right now is the Canon 10 to 18 millimeter. And so this lens is a little bit higher quality. I've got two more lenses right here that I'm going to play around with. It's the 24 millimeter pancake lens and a 50 millimeter nifty 50 prime lens. Both of these are going to be interesting and fun to get some more of those detail shots. This one opens up to an F 1.8, so that's gonna let in a lot more light. This one is an f2.8. This one right here is also an f2.8, which is better than the Canon 10 to 18 millimeter, which is on the camera you're watching right now. So I did want to be able to let in as much light as possible. So before we get into taking photos, if you are shooting photography for yourself, or if you're a real estate agent, or you're shooting photos for a real estate agent, trying to make a space look as good as possible, do your due diligence. Make sure you clean up the space. This is the cleanest this room is ever going to get. After August, I'm sure it's not going to be looking like this, so that helps. But if you are shooting a space, make sure you clean it up. Less is more. So even in this room, it's very clean, but there are a few things that I might actually take down or rearrange to make it look even better, make it less cluttered. So First things first, I'm going to try to get a wide angle shot of this entire room. So I'm going to start off back here. We're going to be starting back over here, getting a wide looking that way. Then I'm going to get a couple wides looking at each side because we are having twins. We have the two cribs and so we've decorated both sides of the room and I want to get wide shots of both of those. Then I'm going to come back over here, maybe towards where this camera is actually, and I'm going to get the reverse of the entire room looking this way. Then I'm going to go in for some detail shots. So let me set up this camera. I am just using a cheap tripod. So as always, I'm trying to challenge myself with using cheap DIY equipment. It doesn't go that high, but we're going to get it as high as possible. Usually, usually looking down in a room will look better. We're going to get as wide as possible. So let's set up this shot. So now you can kind of see the uh, wall that I'm going to be looking at. So we have the changing pad, the diaper caddy that's on this desk. I'm actually going to take the diaper caddy down, just removing some of that clutter and then center the changing pad like so. So I'm here in the tight corner of the back of the room and I'm setting up my shot. So first things first, I'm going to set up a general shot just to get my settings right. I noticed that I had left the light on, so I'm gonna make sure I turn that off. One of the reasons I turned that off was because I don't like that top down sort of lighting. The other reason is because that light bulb is more of a tungsten temperature light. And so it's got this warm light and then we got the cooler light coming in from the window. And I don't want to mix those light temperatures in this shot. So I just want to use that light coming in from the window. 
Awesome, so now I have a general shot and I wanna set up my settings. So first things first, as always, if we can, I'm going to drop my ISO. And so I'm gonna drop my ISO as low as possible to 100. Now when I do that, it means that everything is going to get a little bit too dark. I am opening up to an f2.8 aperture, and so that's the widest this goes, and still it's too dark. I'm at a currently 1 80th of a shutter speed, and so with these settings, it's too dark. And that's one of the reasons why I'm on a tripod, so that I can increase my shutter speed to something like 1 1 60th, 1 25th to get enough light. One thing that is common in real estate photography or blog style photography of something like a nursery like this is very bright photos, somewhat overexposed photos. Now you can boost the exposure in post-production, but I wanna do as much work in camera as possible. I don't wanna lose out on too many details, but I do want to slightly overexpose. So let me take one shot at 1 one thirtieth. Now I'm gonna actually boost my exposure just a little to 1 15th of a second. And I am losing a lot of that detail in the window, but the rest of the room is looking a lot brighter and a lot better. Now in terms of settings, I'm pretty happy with that. It's close enough to exposure that I'll be able to edit it. The thing I'm not happy about is the look itself. It's a little too straight on. I actually want it to be slightly kind of off-centered or looking at an angle. And to be honest, it's not as wide as I would like. I'm as wide as possible, so I'm at a 11 millimeter on this lens. So what I'm actually gonna do is get back here, smush this tripod as much as possible into the closet. And now I can see kind of the tripod itself. So here I am. I've got a hamper right here. Ugh, taking that out. This is where we hide all the clutter. So now I can really get this camera back as far as possible to get this wider shot. Now I also want to make it a little bit taller so I can bring up these legs and bring them in together just a little bit to try to raise this camera. I'm working with what I've got and this looks like it's gonna be the best that I can get. So I'm gonna get one shot right now but the camera is actually in the frame. So I'm gonna get a better shot without the camera then I'm going to flip the camera on that side because I wanna get both the angle looking towards the door and then a little bit towards the window just to have my options so that if I like one or the other in post, uh, I'll have both options. Now I'm in the other corner of the room trying to get the sort of master shot looking this way. I'm gonna take a shot so you can see the tripods in the frame, but one thing that I'm noticing in this shot is that I can't see this entire quilt right here that is kind of one of the most important parts. And I also noticed that I have a couple camera lenses on the floor. So what I'm actually going to do is kind of open this door and get outside of the door to get even wider and make sure I clean up those things too. All right, so now with me standing outside of the door frame, I can get as wide as I want. I'll take a shot so you can see what I'm getting. So again, the camera is in the frame and I'll take another shot after I stop recording without the tripod in there. But in this shot, I can see both quilts on both cribs. I can see even parts of this bookcase right here. That is kind of a cool sort of framing to this entire photo. And you get that little detail in there as well. So we kind of, with this shot, get everything in the frame except for the changing table and the pictures on the wall right there, which I'm gonna be getting in my next shot. While I'm over here, I'm also going to get a shot that's a little bit tighter where we see the whole quilt, but we are cutting off the edge of the photo with these books right here. I'm guessing that when I get into post, I'm gonna hope that, or I'm gonna want both options. And so it's good while you are taking your photos to get those shots. In post, you can crop in 
And if I did wanna cut out those books from that previous shot, I could do that. But when you're shooting, it's a good idea to get both shots. Also, the way that these wide lenses work, when you are on that wide focal length, you get a little bit of warping around the edge. So sometimes it's a nice idea to actually zoom in a little bit with these lenses and take your shot so you get a little bit less of that warp. Something you can, again, also fix in post. But why make more work for us in post when you can fix that while you're shooting? So I flipped everything around and we are taking more of a close-up shot of just the dresser, the changing pad, and these four images up there. With that wide shot from before, you couldn't really see the details of what exactly those frames were about. So I'm gonna take a couple of shots right here. My settings right now are the same. It might be a little bit bright, so I'm gonna bring down that shutter speed. So actually making it a little bit faster. One thing that's cool about this camera is that you can set it up so that the touch screen actually triggers the shutter. So I can tap it right there. And the important thing about that is when you have a longer shutter speed, when you're doing low light photography and you don't have a remote control, even touching and pressing the shutter release button on the front of the camera can add a little bit of camera shake. So something like an 1 15th, 1 10th, something like that. You might get a little bit of motion blur if you're not completely steady. So setting it up so this is a touch screen now, and when I just tap that, there's less movement to the camera itself. It takes a moment for it to actually engage the shutter because I'm on the live view, and when you're on the live view and once you actually take the photo, it takes just a beat for it to turn off the live view, take the photo, and then come back to the live view. And that's actually a good thing because I want my finger to be away from the camera before it actually opens and closes the shutter so it doesn't get any camera shake. So I like this photo. One thing I'm actually gonna do is close this curtain over here. I've got this nice yellow curtain and while I do this, I'm gonna talk about it. It actually creates a nice sort of warm lighting situation. And so this curtain, I know it's really dark in the camera right now, but it actually creates this nice sort of warm, feeling, this warm lighting, almost sort of like golden hour. Now if I take one photo right here, it's a little bit dark, it's a little bit moody, not necessarily what you want for a nursery, but it's actually kind of cool. I'm also going to just get one better exposed photo right here. Now I'm at a one sixth of a second shutter. So that's a really long shutter. You wouldn't be able to get this steady without motion blur if you were using your hands. That's again why this tripod is so necessary. But if you compare these two shots, the one with the photo with the curtain and the one without the curtain, you do have this naturally warmer feeling to it. Again, something you could add in post, but why add more work in post when you could do it right now? The other thing is we have this lamp over here. So when I turn on this lamp, it adds even more warm light. It's a warmer bulb closer to tungsten. It's still an LED bulb, but now they're getting warmer and warmer. And so this adds more warm light, so I don't have to go down to such a slow shutter of 1 6th. I can go to something like 1 30th or 1 25th, 1 20th, and it still looks pretty good. I'm gonna take one shot there. And so this really gives it a different style. You see the light coming from the lamp. It is still daytime, so you still have the light coming in from outside, but having that lamp on gives it a different style. And actually doing these photos at night with just the light from the lamp would be kind of cool too. While I'm here, I'm gonna take one more shot, a vertical, more portrait style, and I'm gonna zoom just in a little bit closer to this dresser. I really just wanna get the top of the dresser, the changing pad, and the images above. And in this photo, it's kinda of cool having the light from the lamp shining on the dresser and on those images. All right, so I know I've gotten a lot of wide shots now. I'm gonna get a couple more of each crib, and then I'm gonna move into some closer up detailed shots, and I have to switch lenses to do that. So I've switched over to the Canon 24 millimeter pancake lens, and this is good for getting some more sort of medium close-up detail shots. It's not as close as 
the 50 millimeter that I'm going to be using in a minute. But I find that when I'm photographing a room like this and I'm going from a wide shot to details, I wanna move in with focal length. I don't wanna jump from the wide straight to the 50 millimeter close up if I am trying to shoot some sort of medium close up shots. I like kind of progressing. Now I'm shooting these bookshelves right now. So what I'm gonna do is get sort of a full shot and then get a little bit tighter to get a close up. I'm still at a 1 20th of a shutter, so I'm gonna leave it on the tripod. It would be really nice if I could just take it off the tripod and start shooting, but this also allows me to be able to line up things even better. When you're lining up things and you're aligning bookshelves or bed frames or dressers or doors in your shots, it's always good to have those lines of the shelves and of the door frames or of anything perfectly horizontal, perfectly vertical as much as possible. That's one thing that can take your photo kind of to the next level if your lines are straight. So I'm gonna take one shot here. Now it was 1 20th of a second and I could tell that by pressing the shutter release button I might have gotten a little camera shake so I'm gonna just take one more photo by using the tap of the screen option. Now I know not everyone has that option but I'm enjoying it right now for this photo. That's pretty good. Now if you can't get your lines perfectly straight, that's okay, but maybe instead of having it kind of like just off, you might want to have it completely sort of at an angle. And sometimes I find that having and setting up your photos at an angle look better than try to, trying to have everything squared off. So I like this actually a little bit better. Now those were a couple sort of vertical shots. Now I'm going to take one horizontal. Now one thing that I want to do though is kind of rearrange these books. There's a lot of great books, but there's a couple that are very special. One is this Two is for Twins book, and so I'm going to put that right in the front. I mean, it's obvious that this is kind of a twins nursery, but I want to make sure that people know that when they look at the photos. So I've shot this one photo and notice what I'm dealing with. I'm dealing with this glare on the twins book and that's coming from this window over here. So a couple things that I'm going to try to do are just adjusting my angle. Dropping down on the tripod. That works a little bit better because the angle of the reflection isn't going directly into the lens now. Now another thing I might do is just come from this direction over here as well. And with this direction, I'm gonna go just close up on this book. I'm gonna actually have to get a little bit brighter. This one was at 1 20th, but you can tell it's a little bit dark. 1 10th of a second, shutter speed. Everything else is the same. F2.8, ISO 100. We've stuck with that this entire shoot. Now that's pretty much my process for getting the detailed shots. Now I'm going to go around and get a couple different detail shots that I'm sure you're going to be looking at right now. But just notice how I'm trying to achieve capturing the entire room. Capturing all the details in at least one shot. So we have shots of the different tapestries on the wall, the map on the wall, the mobiles that are over the crib. We have the little plant in the background and I don't have to take a photo of that plant by itself. But if I can get a shot of that plant with the mobile in the foreground, we get two things done in one shot. I'm also going to get a closer up shot of the quilt and then also of the dressing table itself. Now I'm going to switch over to the 50 millimeter and see if I can get some even tighter close up detail shots. So when I was switching the 50 millimeter lens, I realized that the batteries for my mic had gone. And so I am sorry and I hope that it wasn't too long that you had to listen to the not so good microphone. But anyways, when I switch my fifth to my 50 millimeter lens, the first thing I'm going to do is open up the aperture because I know that I can go from what was an f2.8 on the other lenses to an f1.8, which will open up and give us a lot more light. This will also create a more shallow depth of field and also because this is a more telephoto lens than the other ones, we're automatically going to have less depth of field. So these are really for those creative shots in general for real estate photos or for photos of an entire room you want it to be mostly in focus and so 2.8 is a wide open aperture and if you get really close to something you can get a shallow depth of field but even with the f 2.8 when you're using a wide lens and you're kind of far from everything everything should be mostly in focus. Now with the f 1.8 I'm going to have to compensate by making it darker with the shutter speed. 
So I can't lower my ISO anymore. So the only thing I can do is crank up or make my shutter speed actually faster. So something like 1 30th looks good. Still a little bit too slow to go handheld, at least for me. Now I'm just gonna take a test shot really quick right there. And you can see that in this photo, we've got a really, really shallow depth of field. The focus is really on that second part of the title for the Two is for Twins book. And this is the first time where I'm actually going to switch from autofocus to manual focus in this entire shoot. When you're using a lens with a very shallow depth of field, you might need to do this so you can really dial in the focus yourself because I want the focus to be on the letters two in this title and not on the end of that title. So let me take a shot here. And I like that one a lot better than the previous one. I think it draws your eye to the right part of this book. So I've moved over here to this detail of these giraffes and this little drawing of a couple elephants. This was actually drawn by my mom for our invitations and we thought it was so cute so we framed it. And so I'm trying to actually frame these up and one thing you'll notice as I've moved from getting the wide shots to getting more detail shots, I'm not sticking at a higher angle looking down anymore. Those look good for those wide shots, but when I'm getting details, I really wanna be almost eye level with whatever I'm shooting. So I'm getting this camera down low like this. I'm gonna take a shot. Now, one thing I noticed with this shot is that even just the inch or so difference in the frame and the giraffes, you get some parts of it in focus and some is out of focus. So how do we increase our depth of focus or depth of field? We increase our f-stop, meaning we close down our aperture. So I'm gonna do that, which is actually gonna let in less light. This is one shot where it's gonna be hard to get a blurry depth of field with getting everything in focus. So I'm okay going down to something like an f4.0, but when I do that, it gets a little too dark as you can see. So I am going to have to make it brighter with my shutter speed again, going back to a 1 10th. Let's go even further with our aperture. I'm at a f9.0. Now I'm at a half second shutter speed, which is really long, but because we're on a tripod, it's completely okay. And even though it's open, the shutter for half a second and letting in light for half a second, we don't get any camera shake because we're on a tripod and the camera is completely still. And that's what you want. You don't want any camera shake. So after I got those giraffe shots, I went around and got a couple more detail shots, close up of the mobile, close up of the quilts. And overall, I'm pretty happy with this shoot. I am gonna take these into post and see what I can do. But because I did most of the work while shooting, there shouldn't be much editing. I might do a little bit of adding some contrast, bringing down the blacks, maybe warming them up just a little bit. The exposure should be pretty close, so I probably won't do much there. And the saturation, this is one sort of shoot where I don't want things to be oversaturated, so I'm gonna leave it as is. Usually with raw photos, I will add a little bit of saturation to them, but in this situation, I'm just going to really leave it as is because that's the style I'm going for with this shoot. So hopefully following along with this video, you were able to get some tips and tricks for shooting not only indoors with low light, but also in a small space. You saw that I was using all the space that I could use possibly with opening doors and really just using a wide lens to try to capture the entire space. You can see going from the iPhone photos to the photos that I took with the Canon 70D that the quality, it just can't really be compared. And the quality from this camera are really the, those types of photos you'll see on blogs, on Pinterest, the ones that inspire you to design your own home in the way they do. So I think right now sitting in this chair, it's super duper comfy. I might need a nap, but until next time, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like and subscribe it if you did. Make sure you leave a comment or a question if you have any. And if you have any more ideas or thoughts about what I should shoot, any challenges you want me to take, I would be happy to do them so that I can show you my process of taking photos. I know I'm not the best photographer in the world, but my goal is to help you take better photos with whatever camera you have. Thanks so much for watching and have a beautiful day.